I want to share a new toy or tool we got yesterday. I guess it depends on how much you like doing machine work as to which one of those things you would call it. I am one of those people that hunts Craigslist. I happened to find something here that I wasn't looking for. This is an AccuTapper. It is a tapping machine powered by an electric motor and it has a clutch system that self reverses it based on the pressure that you put on the spindle. It's a regular Jacobs chuck that you can put really whatever you want into it. It's mostly meant for taps, so you can put a tap in here, the table slides, and as you put pressure on the spindle, it turns clockwise to run the tap into the part. And then as you pull away from the tap, uh, the clutch reverses, unthreads it from the hole. The tapping action is all done by hand and by feel. Nothing new, there's been lots of different versions of this. We have a couple of the older vertical style for very small taps where it will come down and self-reverse and come out very fast and easy for small taps, very small parts. One reason that you might not want to use one of these depends on your customer's specification. Eight or ten years ago, all the mil-spec military specifications don't allow vendors to use these hand-operated machines for production of military parts. My understanding is that the reason for that is they want to make sure that the alignment of the tap matches the alignment of the hole within a, a better spec than you might get on a machine like this. Now this can do very well, but it's dependent on the operator. With a CNC machine, it's all in the same setup in the same machine, nothing has moved in between those operations. Usually with this, you're going to be drilling your hole in another machine or a drill press, and then coming over here and tapping it by hand. In this case, the alignment of the hole, if you are out one degree, two degrees, it's not gonna make any difference for most assemblies, but that's gonna be dependent on your customers, the kinds of parts you make, and the specifications that you have to meet. We do a lot of prototyping, short run stuff, parts that need to have long threads in them, where you'd have to do a bunch of pecs, and you may wanna do it by hand, because it's a new material first before we do a program for it or NC tapping, things like that. It gives me a feel and an idea of how much stress certain depth of thread is going to put on a tap, so how many pecs you actually need, things like that. And this one, it's mostly made for holding taps. I would like to make an adapter for holding dies also. This is a little die holder I made for doing die threading in a lathe. It holds the die in the front and has a round shank on the back, so this can go in the tailstock, and then you can and slide the tailstock and quickly thread and unthread uh, on the part in the spindle. I'd like to be able to do that with this, either making an adapter to go in the chuck or swapping out the chuck or something like that. We do lots of things where you either have to thread the end of a long rod or maybe it's a small turnbuckle, something like that, where you have a left hand on one side and a right hand on the other side, and you need to be able to make them very fast to be able to meet a reasonable price point. So this one is very compact. It's bench mountable. This is on a big cast iron top table. You really want this to be mounted to the floor would be great or to a table that's heavy enough to where it's not going to move when you push on it. It takes a decent amount of force to activate the torque on this. The torque is based on how much force you push on it. If you have a larger tap, this will take up to a 3 8 tap. 3 8 16 is what it will hold. I don't know if I would want to do that all the time. You'd have to have it very rigidly mounted. It comes with this little table here that is adjustable and removable. Multiple mounting positions, slides on slots. You can take it off, so you could use this for tapping the end of a rod, probably in a V fixture that you could adjust into position would work well. This could be handy if you either don't have a lathe or you don't have a lathe that would take stock big enough. Maybe it's a large rod that you need to do. You could also put drills in here if you needed to drill into something that was unusually long that either won't fit in your machine, lathe, or mill. You could do it on this very quickly and easily. Turn on the switch. That's going to turn on the motor. The motor runs all the time. The machine is activated by the pressure. So you push against it, chuck turns clockwise. You pull away, and it goes reverse. You could, of course, mark and you know center punch your hole, and then you could also do drilling operations with this.
And the safety of this operation would really depend on the size of your part. You want to make sure that it's uh, big enough for you to hold on to or you could add a clamp to it or fixture it or something like that. I just want to show you the possibilities here. And then you could go and swap that out with a tap and do your threading and then you would have your hole in the end of a long rod. This could be handy for rectangular or square stock too. You could set this up in a very simple alignment fixture, do your drilling, and then swap out your tap, tap it, and be done. So let's take a plate here. I have a couple extra pieces here. I'll show you the tapping action on it, and I'm gonna turn it off before we do that. That's one of the safety concerns with this machine is you have to remember all the time that anytime you put any pressure in either direction on that spindle, it's gonna turn. So by putting a chuck in here with the motor running is a pretty dangerous maneuver, and it's definitely something you don't wanna forget. So you always wanna turn it off when you're changing the tooling. You turn it back on. We can throw some tap magic on here. We have pre-drilled holes. This is quarter 20, about a 200 thou hole. You just push against the tap and pull away and it reverses. So you can see how quickly this works by hand here, rather than doing it in an NC mill, maybe you don't have one. I think these, a lot of these uh, are intended for operations or shops where they maybe don't have a machine that does rigid tapping or one that uh, could do peck tapping also. You can go in and out of that hole as many times as you want. You could peck whatever depth you want. Like I said, this machine is brand new to me. I'm literally playing around with it with you here on video, getting used to it myself. But you can see where you can have a large number of holes set up on a part on a strip and you can run through and tap them very quickly. It may even be faster than using a tapping head because you're moving the part manually. You don't have to index the table to the new position each time. You're using the tap to align to the hole. So if your tolerances allow that, this is a great option. 99% of the time, nobody aligns to threaded holes or they shouldn't. It'll do whatever thickness you want. It'll do steel. We're playing with aluminum right now. I kind of don't want to do this one barehanded with all these burrs on it because if it does grab and spin the part, I'm going to tear up my finger. We turned it off so I can change the tooling here in the spindle. We're going to throw in a countersink. Quick and easy to change. Turn it back on. And now we can deburr these holes. I'm actually going to pull that table off here so it's out of the way. And then we can move this back out of the way as much as we can. Now we have more access to it. We can just push against the part and then chamfering there for deburring. These are the holes before from a quick drill and then deburring the backside with this guy. very fast and very easy. Of course, you wanna be aware and kind of set yourself up to do things safely. Let's go and put our tap back in there. And now I feel better about doing this without uh, risking cutting myself. Six holes really fast. So let's be safe and turn the power off and unplug it before we do this. Show you what the inside looks like and take a look at the clutch system on this. There's lots of different ways of tapping, lots of different ways of approaching tapping, and lots of dis different reasons for, for doing those operations the way that you choose to do them. As far as like precision and quality goes, I would kind of like put this machine in the middle. Got precision CNC run taps which are kind of, you know, high quality standard. You've got thread milling, which I think is even better than running a tap in and out of a hole. You have this, which is kind of in the middle of quality. You know, you're using the hole to align the tap. It's hand operated. There's potential for error there. And then you have the tap handles that you may line up or you may not line up. Different 
ways of doing it for different reasons. This is a pretty cool machine. I'm not going to claim to know everything about how this works specifically. I'm not going to take it apart to learn that. But what we can see is it's running a single V-belt around the motor and it has an idler on the other side here to give the tension. But you've got some kind of a uh, rubbery cork-like clutch pad here and that's what's giving you the grip between the drive belt that's running continuously all the way around. I imagine there's a spring or something in there that holds it relatively in the middle space there. The motor's running all the time and when you push against the chuck you're going to hit the back drive here which is going to actually runs uh, so I, I'm assuming the motor is going this way. That's what I had wrong. So the motor's running this way all the time. When you push on the spindle, it's pushing the clutch against this back driver, back roller. It's pulling the spindle into the power of that disc in the back here. And then when you pull away, you pull your part away from the spindle, it's moving the clutch system forward. So now it's reversing direction based on how that belt travels. Pretty well made, probably aluminum castings, but you have a stacked casting here with a uh, motor mounted to another aluminum plate in the bottom. So it's all very rigid and robust. Bronze bushings, probably oil lights, very rigid. You can tell just by the feel of it and how it moves. There's not a lot of play in there. I'm excited to apply it to some projects coming up and see how much really time we can save with it after we get the fun out of playing with it and learning how to use it.